ஓம் பிரம்மானந்தம் பரமசுகதம் கேவலம் ஞானமூர்த்தி துவாதீதம் ககனசதர்ஷம் தத்வமசியாதிலட்சியம் ஏக்கம் நித்தியம் விமலமச்சலம் சர்வதீசாட்சிபூதம் பாவாதீதம் திரிகுணரீதம் சத்குரு நம கண்டமண்டலாக்காரம் வியாப்தம் ஏனச்சராச்சரம் தத்பம் தர்சிதம் ஏன தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீகுருவே நம அஜானதிமிராந்தஞ்சனம் சலாகய சக்ஷுருமிதம் ஏன தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீகுருவே நம குருர்பிரம்மா குருர்விஷ்ணு குருர்தேவோ மகேஸ்வரா குருர் சாட் பரபிரம் தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீகுருவே நம வி ஹவ் கேதர்ட் once again for shivratri this time in the city of shiva usually it's in madnapalli what i was going to tell you that even if it is in madnapalli it's still the city of shiva but now we have come to varanasi which is the established city of shiva for ages for years for thousands of years it's the oldest city probably in the world probably older than rome and here kashi is also called the city of light sri ramakrishna paramahamsa said as soon as he got off his palanquin mathur babu had brought him to banaras he looked and he said i saw only light well i haven't seen that much a little bit i have seen here in as much of light so i want to today therefore base our satsang on shiva the supreme and you and i were actually in one sense no less the whole idea is to make you understand that in the essence of your being there is this shame all pervading shivam blissful shivam for this i need to <coughs> start with this beautiful mantra which is usually chanted during all rudra abhishekam worship of shiva you all must be knowing the mantra i can give you a hint it's about the three eyes so See, who said the Indians don't know about it? <laughs> yeah. So the mantra is <clears throat> Om Trayambakam Mejamahe Sugandhim Pushtivardhanam Urva Rukami Vabandhanan Mrityur Mukshiyam Amrita This is the great mantra. Now, just listen carefully. First, it says i worship or bow down to yaja also means i offer my yajna to we'll come to that later the three eyed one trayam vakam yaja mahe you know, what is this quality sugandhim the fragrance you now fragrance can be physical fragrances can be spiritual usually when there is a spiritual fragrance the physical fragrance is also good hmm? sugandhim pushti vardhanam pushti means all goodness health auspiciousness uh, expansion wealth everything is included in that word pushti in fact there is one uh vaishnavite uh section i didn't say sect but a section of people who claim to belong to the pushti marga was started by vallabha acharya who incidentally happened to come from andhra pradesh uh, i'm not saying because well my aadhar card is andhra even though i come from kerala so <laughs> Vallabhacharya was the one who saved the image of Krishna 
which was in Mathura. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful ancient image of Krishna in Mathura. The origin is supposed to have been Dwarka. After Dwarka was flooded, this image had come, floated in the river and it was taken and established in Mathura many hundreds of years ago. And then came Aurangzeb. Many things happened during Aurangzeb's time. One of the things, well, he was in his own way a very orthodox uh, religious man, but he started destroying images wherever he could find. If he had destroyed the images of his ego, it would have been nice, but he started destroying outside wherever he could find images. And uh, one of his, on his radar was this Krishna in Mathura. So, the great Acharya Vallabha, who hailed from Andhra Pradesh, who had settled down in Mathura, Vrindavan, overnight took the image away to save it from Aurangzeb and took this Krishna to uh, Udaipur. The rulers of Udaipur are supposed to be the heads of the Rajput clan, actually. I don't know if all Rajputs will agree with this, but it's generally. So, he went to the then king and said, please, can you protect and keep it here? Even though the rulers of Udaipur's titulary deity was Shiva. There was a Shiva temple there, Ekalingeshwar. <coughs> the chief, the king, agreed to protect it. So the famous Nath Dwara was built. The image in Nath Dwara is the image of Krishna that went from Mathura, taken by Vallabhacharya, and consecrated there, and the Nath Dwara temple was built, which is why from that time the rulers of Udaipur came to be referred as Shriji because they had Srinath there. I'm just, I was just going off from the main direction because I wanted to tell you about Pushti. So the Vaishnava uh, group founded by Vallava is called the Pushti Marga. Uh, after Kirtan, Bhajan and Puja, they usually give you nice Vedas to eat, Pushti, enjoyment. There's only one place where you get Bida as Prashad, sweet Bida. Anyway, so Pushti is health, happiness, auspiciousness, everything put together. So, Triambakam Mejamahe, I worship or offer Ajna to the three eyed being who is the root cause and who is the one who is the giver of pushti. Uh, sugandha fragrance, sugandhim pushti vardhanam, may the pushti increase. Now the next sentence is a little tricky. Urva rukamiva bandhanan, just like the pumpkin when it becomes really ripe, falls off from its receptacle. What is it? That stem? What do you call it? You know the pink stalk. You know the, the pumpkin, like many fruits, is attached to a stalk. When it gets fully ripe, what happens? It falls off. Urvaru kamiva bandhana and it breaks its bandhan connection with the stalk and becomes independent, falls off. Muktyor, Mukshiya, Mahamritat, in the same way, O oh, Three-Eyed One, give me Mukti or freedom from the stock of attachment that keeps me in this world. This is the mantra. But since human beings are always worried about their physical deaths, usually people chant Mahamritinjaya, thinking that this will save you from death. I know a person who kept chanting and had an accident and died. So, anyway. 
So, the real meaning <laughs> of the word Mrityanjaya is to be finally free of death. How can you be finally free of death? When you have a physical body, it has to die, right? No one can escape. On the surface, you think that nobody can escape. But when you figure out that you are not this body, then there is no death. This is why it's called Mrityanjaya. That means you reach a state. You know the famous story from the Katho Upanishad of the young Nachiketas who goes to see Yama. You know the story. You must have heard me or you would have read somewhere. You might have heard others. Katho Upanishad is a beautiful Upanishad. I have been trying hard to make these Upanishads part of the academic curriculum. It hasn't worked so far. Anyway, so um, this young boy, Nachiketas, I'm going to. Ex I'm saying this story because to explain, Yajamahe, I offer yajna to the three-eyed God. What is the meaning of yaja, yajna? Is it merely offering uh, material into the fire, or is it more than that? Now, in the Kathopanishad is a perfect example to show you what an yajna actually is. The young boy, uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't do an yajna, okay? You can. It's a good thing to do. <clears throat> but it goes beyond that. In the Karmakanda section of the Vedas, yajnas. The Jnana Kanda, which is the Upanishad, it's what it applies to yourself. And you cannot jump into the kar, uh, Jnana Kanda without going through the Karma Kanda. Let me tell you this. Yeah? To innovate, you should know something first, right? There's an expert dancer who has practiced for years. She knows exactly everything about dance. And then when she innovates, then we appreciate it. If you don't know dance at all, you do this, this, what innovation can you do? So, Karma Kanda is how to put you into a certain order. And then from there, few people think about the deeper aspects and rise above. It's not to neglect, but it is to understand. So, <clears throat> Nachiketa's father is a rishi. He performs a yajna. Well, yajna is normally referred to as a sacrifice. And after the yajna, the little boy Nachiketa is watching. He gives gifts to the brahmanas who have come to perform the yajna. And the little boy is watching. What is he giving as a gift, as a yajna? To the brahmanas who have come to do the yajna? Lame cows, blind cows, cows which have no milk, cows which can barely stand up. So this young Shraddha attention gets into this boy's little brain and he says to his father, what is this father? What kind of a sacrifice is this? You are giving away cows which is no use for you. You are giving away a second hand car to a charitable organization. What kind of a sacrifice is this? Huh? There is a Mercedes standing in your shed. Can you give it to somebody? He asks his father, were you giving lame cows and blind cows and useless cows as a gift? Is this a gift? Then he says, look at me, I am standing before you. I am your most valuable position. Who will you offer me to? Yajna. And the Upanishad says that the Rishi in anger, I don't believe this, that Rishi could not have been angry, but in, they normally say in anger, he said, I will give you away to death. 
and because he is a rishi he actually is dice he goes to yama's court the young boy the rishi is supposed to speak the truth someone said if you speak nothing but the truth for 12 years minimum of 12 years after which even if you say something false it will become the truth <laughs> Unfortunately, from morning to evening, I don't know how many untruths we had. And yet, we are searching for the absolute truth. Anyway, so <laughs> and I have to say all this. We are in the city of Shiva, whose main job is samhara, finish, tanda anirta, break everything down, let it crumble. I'm not going to do that. I'm <laughs> So, so what did I say? You went upstairs. <laughs> okay. So yeah, actually he went upstairs. So he, uh, I think the father was testing him out. He wanted him to learn, and which better teacher than Yama himself, the Lord of Death? So he went there. now it was a surprise move you know yama had gone somewhere else to look for a soul so for nachiketas had to wait for 3 days in yama's office consultancy because yama had gone to pick up some other soul he didn't know this young fellow is going to come so then when yama came back he found this young boy shining faced brahmachari waiting here for 3 days now the rule is if your guest comes you have to offer water you have to offer food you have to say how are you and so on atiti devo bhava god has come to your house and yama felt very bad i haven't asked him 3 days he has waited i haven't asked him did you have water did you have... so he says okay since i have done this it's a mistake hmm ask me for three boons and i will grant it to you because <coughs> the first bonus nachiketa says when i go back may my father not be angry with me and recognize me like a boy young boy but what you have to note he also says not only not be angry may my father recognize me when i go back you know why because having had the vision of truth everything changes my father may not even recognize this boy he comes back even there is cellular change everything changes so he says may my father recognize me and then two what is the way to find heaven where you find lasting happiness granted free some say that you die finally some say that you don't that the body dies among these which is the right can you tell me you are the lord of death if you say that i am ready to accept it what is the correct position here so the whole of the kathopanishad is how yama teaches this boy nachiket saying you can be free of death if you know your true self who you actually are are you this boy who is the son of so and so or in the depths of your consciousness are you something else which never dies if you are the son of this man yes you will die what if you are the essence so the whole inquiry about finding your true self when you find your true self then there is no father this is the nirvana shataka to put it in english which was sung was i have no father parents i am not anybody's son or daughter i don't have any relatives i am free i am free i am shivam i am shivam 
I am not bound, so I don't seek moksha. Why? Because what is the bondage for the true Shiva? No bondage. Huh? I have no competition. I have no fear. I have no desire because I know that I am in true essence everything. So what do I desire for? I am neither this earth nor the heavens. I am neither the maker nor the non-maker. I am not the emotions, I am none of these. I am never born, therefore I have no death. If you are born, you have to die. Chidananda Rupam, Rupaha, Shivoham, Shivoham. My true nature is that I am of the nature of consciousness and bliss. I am Shivam, I am Shivam. This is the Nirvana Shataka. Apparently when Shankara, Adi Shankara was a young child, <coughs> he was wandering around and somebody asked him, who are you? And he said, I am neither this nor that. I am not a boy, I am not an old man. I am. I have no desire, I am not a mumukshu, I am not a guru, I am not a disciple. Then he said, what are you? I am Shivam, I am Shivam. I am of the nature Chidananda Rupa. I am of my Rupa. My form is that of Chit, which is consciousness, and Ananda, which is blissfulness. I am Shivam. I am Shivam. This is not only Shankara who said this. The message is every one of us sitting here. If you would only at some point in your life think, that I cannot be this temporary thing that comes and goes and which suffers sometimes for no reason, sometimes for reasons. In my true essence I am that Shivam, which is bliss consciousness and auspiciousness. Shivam is also auspiciousness. This is the Nirvana Shataka. And some people think it's to be just sung, just to enjoy the music, that's fine. But please look into the meaning of this. And now, since we are in the city of Shiva, in Kashi, you know, we were in Vrindavan for the uh, Bhagavat Saptaha. Everything was nice and hunky-dory and sweet and gopis and Krishna. That's one aspect of the story. Madhukarnath enjoys the bliss of happiness in Vrindavan. Very nice. Krishna and the gopis. And then now we have come to Kashi. This is the other side. What is the other side? Stark reality of life. Behind this, there is a temple there, you saw. There is Shiva, of course, but there is another deity there. Terribly horrendous deity. This deity is Bhadrakali. With the tongue out, people sometimes... In fact, in the early days, the Christian missionaries used, Why are you worshipping monsters? Got it? Kali is the destructive aspect of the universal energy of Shiva. Why destructive? Because life is destructive. It's here today, gone tomorrow. Even when a child is born, like the Buddha said, no child is born laughing. The first sign that a child is born is as if deep down it knows I'm going into a terrible place. But you can make it a good place if you want. How? By knowing that this child might have come many times and gone, but the essence of his being is always there. It neither comes nor does it come. Not only that child, you, me, everybody. So. Kali, for instance, if you go and look, you will find some gentleman lying under her feet. Beautiful symbol of women's liberation. 
<laughs> and the guy who is lying under the feet is Shiva. <laughs> Not Vishnu in Ananta Sayana, that is my tutelary deity in Travancore. But this is actually Shiva lying on a chest, dances Kali with her leg up, tongue down, blood coming out of the nose. People say, oh, terrible. But life is terrible. Face it. In fact, the description of Kali in the Tantra is very interesting. The first few descriptions. Karalavadanam, Ghoram, Muktakesham, Chaturbhujam, Kalikam, Dakshinam, Divyam, Mundamala, Vibhushitam. Means Kalika, Dakshinam, Divyam, you know, Divine, Mundamala, Vibhushitam. Mukta Keshim means whose hair is free, not tied up like this. Mundamala Vibhushitam, who has a garland of human heads around the neck. Which means anyone who truly, truly wants to worship Kali is a goddess who takes all your ego out, crushes you like Shiva under her feet and dances. If you really want to understand that Shakti called Kundalini, not what you can awaken by paying six thousand bucks, not that. If you really want to, huh? yeah, nowadays you can do that. He's an interesting gentleman. I don't fully agree with him, but he makes sense many times. Well, I'm not his cup of tea, but like he said, women shouldn't read the Vedas, and so it doesn't matter, it's traditional. But recently uh, I heard him talking to somebody, somebody said, Sir, my Kundalini is awakened. Then he said, then why are you here? Yaha kyo aai bhai? To chale. To kitna paisa diya Kundalini ho par uthane ke liye. So, <laughs> If you are ready to make one of the heads that make the garland of Kali your ego, our ego, and put it there, and then Kali's dance of destruction will destroy our individual identity and we'll be left with only Shiva. Why is Shiva lying there? Aram. That's a symbol. So Shiva is both auspiciousness, Shivam also means auspicious. If you look in the word meaning in the dictionary, Shivam means auspicious. It also means Ananda, another word. Not the ordinary happiness. Now we are very happy, of course. There's a wind blowing from the Ganga. We're sitting in a beautiful place. We are even more happier because we're not facing Kali. Our back is to us. So very happy. Not that happiness. The happiness of which never ends. The Tantra describes it as Anandam Anandam Brahma. That Ananda which is inexhaustible and which can never be destroyed no matter what happens, that is the Brahman. You can call it Shiva. In Kashmir Shaivism, the word Brahman is substituted for Shiva. So Shiva means auspiciousness, Shiva means bliss. But the most important thing is Shiva is your inner being of every human being, man or woman. So that is one side of Shiva. Auspicious, beautiful, sugandhim, fragrant, pushtivardhanam, one who increases spiritual and material wealth, one who makes you grow. Okay. What is the other side of Krishna, of Shiva? The Shiva who does the Tandava Narita. When Shiva does the Tandava Narita, the whole universe trembles. Everything is breaking into pieces. That's when we run away. We can't hold it. We can't stand it. But that is the dance of transformation. Don't call it destruction. It breaks away all that is unnecessary and lives that which is necessary. 
which means as Shankaracharya in his uh, commentary on the Brahma Sutra said, it is the innegatable substratum of the negation of all tangible objects. Everything is gone. Now that requires a real dance to get out. And it's not as if it's an ugly thing, it's a most beautiful thing, this dance of destruction. In fact, even though mostly women dance these days, the chief of all dance is Shiva himself, Nataraja, Lord of Dance. You see, see in the pictures of Nataraja dancing. In fact, some people are so worried, they don't keep Nataraja in their houses. They think it's going to be a destructive dance. Keep it out somewhere near the garden, not inside. So, there's nothing to fear. What is broken and cleared is what, the, what is negative. And what is left behind after not this, not this, nay, thi, nay, thi, is that which is real. Which in essence is the supreme reality, which is you and which is I. I always try to say this, but I am catching this opportunity because we are in Kashi. The Ganga is flowing. Kashi Vishwanath is sitting here somewhere. I am saying he is sitting in every heart. This three-eyed being is the true essence of every human being to discover the power, the glory and the pushti of this being is the essence of the journey towards spiritual understanding. Let's put it that way. Which is why mostly Shiva is represented by a linga rather than any other form. Because a linga simply means a symbol. People must have misunderstood. Linga in Sanskrit means symbol. It's the simplest symbol that you can get. And in Kashi Vishwanath temple, now they are not allowing because of the rush, but anyone who has managed to walk in can touch the linga. That used to be the position. It's changed a bit now. Why? Because he is you and you are he. So therefore, the essence of Shiva is your inner self, free of all misunderstandings, free of all desires, free of all hatred, free of all anger. In that greatness, in that quietness lives the real Shiva. So therefore I wanted these, the young ladies to uh, chant the Nirvana Shataka. Why are you laughing? Ang at heart, okay. <laughs> so, now, there's one part of the story. Now, the great Mahamantra of Shiva, which you find being chanted everywhere here, you go to the temple, apart from the Mrityunjaya Mantra, the basic mantra of Shiva, is Om Namah Shivaya. Well, in the Tamil tradition it is Om Namah Shivaya. It doesn't matter. Hmm? So, what is this mantra? Om, of course, represents the Supreme Being. You know that. I'm not going to Om. We've done many satsangs with Om. In fact, I've done so many satsangs, I think people Nowadays don't understand what is Om, so let's leave it there. But Om is the pranava, the primeval energy that is before every mantra, except some, for various reasons, but mostly. Namah Shivaya, so it's called the Pancha Akshara. Na, Ma, Shi, Va, Ya. Called the Shiva Panchaksha. It's a very important mantra. In fact, the Shaivite uh, part of the Tantras has gone into so many permutations and combinations of this Panchaksha for various, various purposes. 
Nama Shivaya, Shivaya Nama, Vaya Nama Shi and so on. We need not go into that. Vaya Nama Shi, this is also important. But, so it has five letters. And from the point of view of a yogi, and I'm hoping that all of you are yogis, yoginis, yogi. Um, we're sitting in the city of Shiva, so at least for a one day you should be a yogi. Yogi, sit straight. Yesterday I was sitting there and someone was trying to push that round pillow behind my back. I, I basically think that the major reason for back problems is because people can't sit without leaning. If you sit straight, nothing will happen. You see how you sit when you're relaxed? How do you expect the spine to be steady? And the softer, the worst. I mean, like you're, this sofa, I don't like it. It's not so, then you get the sofa. Where you go and you fall inside like a pit. How will your backbone be strong? Look at the asana in which Shiva sits. Are you taking my asana? Or Malayalam, it means something else. Anyway. <laughs> you don't know that. Normally, when you say asana, it's a posture. Or the thing that you sit on is also called an asana. But unfortunately, in Malayalam, it means your bums. So, Kannur, we had a satsang and some person from the north suddenly asked me, serious question, sir. I said, what? Do you have to wash your ass and every day? <laughs> All the Malayali started laughing. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so what did I say? Let's forget the ass. <laughs> Nama Shivaya. Okay, Om Namah Shivaya. So, um, you see only five letters, right? Five letters are also the Pancha Indriyas, the five Indriyas that we have. And who controls the five Indriyas? Who is sitting there and looking and using it? The Lord of the Indriyas. Indriyas are also called Go, G-O, it's a short form of Go, cows. So we have many, five cows, important cows. And who is the controller of the cows? Go Swami. One who is the Swami of all the five cows is the Go Swami, not one who has all that. So, these five letters symbolize the five senses and the five koshas, the five sheets with, through which one has to go before one finds the, the reality. What are the five koshas? Yesterday somebody here was telling me about the five koshas. But I heard it as doshas. <laughs> Only one? Annamaya kosha everybody knows. <laughs> huh? Okay. Okay. And see, we have Vedantins everywhere. I am so happy. These are the sheets of one's consciousness through which one has to, after the Ananda Maya Kosha, still you are not free. <laughs> Ananda Maya Kosha is that level or plane of consciousness where you are enjoying Ananda. Beyond that is that which is not part of any kosha. Shivoham, Shivoham. Chid. Chid Ananda, yes. But through Ananda you come to know about Chit. When you know about Chit, you can't say Ananda because there is no Dukkha and there is no Sukha. So what Ananda? You're free. Apart from that, from the yogic point of view, the Shiva Panchaksharas represent the five centers in the human system. In the Sushumna, which is the central channel through which one's awareness has to rise, 
to the higher levels. In the Shushumna, there are seven centers. The first two, Sahasrara and Ajna, are already represented by Om. And the rest is Namah Shivaya. So, Ya is the Muladhara and so on. So, which could be Na for Namah Shivaya? Yeah. Why the throat center? Because that is where the expression actually comes from. Na, Ma Shivaya. And this is Ma. She, Va, Ya. So when you say Om Namah Shivaya, you are chanting the sound of all the centers together, starting from here and taking it down to the Muladhara. And then from the Muladhara, when it is chanted up, then what is the last word, the sound? Ya. When you start from there and go up, you come here and then you go to Om. This is Shiva. Therefore, this Shiva is in everyone. And when you chant Om Namah Shivaya, even without your knowledge, the sound affects these centers. And gradually your awareness begins to expand. So you keep chanting Om Namah Shivaya. The true meaning of the word Namah Shivaya, or let's say the, the aim of chanting Namah Shivaya is Shivaham. I am Shivam, I am auspiciousness, I am bliss, I am Ananda. The Vedic mantra, Purnamada, Purnamidam, basically talks about the Shiva. The origin of everything is that Ishvara, all pervading Shiva, Purna, it's complete by itself. If it is complete by itself, nothing I just want, no, my idiosyncrasies. If it is complete by itself, then I must be Purna, right? So if I say only my source is Purna, the Upanishad immediately supplies Purna Miram. This is also Purna. That is Purna. This is Purna. And this is the reason why, not knowing that I am Purna, I try to become Purna. How? By buying many cars, many houses, many wives, no, sorry, many, you know, you, and so on and so on. Why? Because I am not satisfied, I am not complete, I don't understand my Purnata, I am Apurna, I am incomplete. I think so. When I change that attitude and begin to understand that I am the source of all, one wife is enough. Maybe sannyasins have none at all, so that's a different matter. But people who keep saying Purnamada, Purnamidam and behave funny in daily life are hypocrites. That's not the way to manage life. It's not a management association. To know one's own inner being and to understand that one is Purna, which is what we are always searching for in this world, trying to become Purna. Thinking that if I gather things, I might become Purna. Why do I want to become Purna? Because in my subconscious I know that I am Purna, but I think I am not. Maybe this is the way. Upanishad says, turn around and look, you are Purna. You don't have to look around. You don't have to become Purna by looking at flying saucers. Purna is inside you. Don't expect to be taken in a flying saucer to distant world and made complete. We are complete already in our true sense of the word. Just need to move from outside and go inside. So from pravrti to navrti. If you look at all these aspects and sum them up, then you see and understand the Shiva who dances. 
in Chidambaram. It's a nice name, Chidambaram. You know what it means? Chit is consciousness. Ambara is clothes. So Chidambara means clothed in consciousness. Actually, there is no image in the Chidambara temple. They decorate something and keep for puja, but there is nothing. And how do we get there? By turning within and looking for our true essence. And what helps us? The moon, which is the mother of all imagination. Soma. You cannot find a chemical Soma, however much you look for it. Soma is the joy of your own self, which you drink when the mind becomes quiet and goes in depths. And Ishavasya Upanishad puts the nail on the head by saying, Tena tena bunjita, let go and rejoice. So at least for the next, this day and tomorrow, don't think of all the cares and worries and I'm so and so, this guy doesn't respect me, um, and so on. Let go. Let go everything and be happy. Rejoice. There's nothing better than that. When the sun comes, it'll be warm, go have a dip in the Ganga. Clean yourself up. Say that, ah, symbolically, now I'm going in. Please come up. Huh? And I come up, I'm pure, I'm clean. Say, Chidananda Rupam, Shivoham, Shivoham, and come out of the country. So, this was all the message that I wanted to give you today. A message of hope, like the walk of hope. A message of hope that please do not degrade yourself as miserable human beings. Think of yourself as sparks of the divine, essence of Shiva. You go to the temple, to Kashi Vishwanath's temple, go there, stand near the Linga. They won't allow you to stand near the Linga and say, this is in me. And then bow down, saying, I bow down to all the beings in whom there is Shiva. And don't cause harm to anybody, because inside is auspicious Shiva sitting. Never know. Suddenly the Trishul might come out. Hmm? And the Trishul, let me finish with the Trishul, is this symbol of the Ida, the Fingala and the Shishumna. Shiva holds the Trishul. The Trishul is in every one of us. It's also the three eyes. One, two, three. It's also the Ida, the Pingala and the Shishumna. So symbolically we carry it. Not to hurt anybody. Having said this, this satsang is over. One hour is enough. Thank you. So evening, um, we are going to light a fire, I think there. There is a dhoni there. Dhuni is one of the important parts of the Nata Sampradaya. Mm. So, since I come from the Nata Sampradaya, Madhukar Nata is from the Nata Sampradaya, not this. So, mm, we are going to light a Dhuni. According to the regulations, Nats have to light Dhuni every day wherever they go. Go, they carry their dhuni. But my dear master has uh, accepted me from it. But twice a year I have to light the dhuni. One is on Guru Purnima, and one is on Shivaratri. So today being Shivaratri, and this is even better, in the city of Shiva we will light the dhuni. But we'll go back to Mannapali next year. Hmm? Uh, so we'll light the dhuni. Come and sit around the dhuni. There will be some programs. Meditate, sing, and look at the fire that burns up all one's imperfections. And when the ashes are left, 
take it and put it across your forehead and say, I won. <laughs> So, welcome to the fire. It's also the fire of desire for fulfillment. It is the fire of desire for completeness. It is the fire of desire, you know, every little desire is a fire. You know, somebody you say, one is filled with zeal, a fire of uh, desire. Nobody says water of desire fire of desire. Even your old girlfriends are called old flames. Nobody says old waters. <laughs> because it is the desire, the fire. So keep the fire of the desire for fulfillment and moksha alive. You have to look for it here. When you go to the temple, look for it there. Both are same. There is no inner, there is no outer, because it is all pervading. There is no difference. Today I think I'm separate. I'm no. I don't. You think you are sitting here. You are sitting. There are two people. Yes, externally, but truly there are no two. There is only one. Ekam. Ekam nityam vimalam achalam. It's one. Nityam always there. Vimalam. There is no mala. There is no dirt in your true self. Achalam, it has no movement. Sarvadi Sakshi Bhutam, it is a witness of all that happens. It doesn't get involved in the play. That's why Mahavishnu is sometimes called Ranganatha. Ranga is, you know, the stage. <laughs> and he's the lord of the stage, makes all the drama and then sleeps. Ananta Sayana, so you can also do that. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 Om Namah Shivaya Shivam Shivam Adesh <laughs>